I see clothing as moving sculptures, as paintings that have warmth, uh, as objects with a spirit that the person can also obtain and have. And I like to think of my work as, as a gift to someone. Fiber artist Jean Casasado lives and works in Berkeley, California, where she creates strong graphic statements in cloth. Her wearables have evolved from a background in graphic arts, painting and sculpture, and a love of fiber. She began her formal art training at Pratt Institute in New York City. The graphic arts is why I started Pratt, and there was at a little bit of an emotional distance uh, in the graphic arts, but there was a language there that I felt was very important. Uh, it was after my first year of college that I realized that, that the expressive forms of art were what I was interested in, and I majored in painting and sculpture. In my junior year of college, I spent the summer with my family in New Jersey and learned how to crochet. It was a very exciting medium to me, going, being, spending those years in college, um, learning about color and form, and finding a medium that uh, I it was so seduced by because it was so it was so there, it was so physical. I loved the yarn, I loved the crochet hook, I loved the sounds, I loved the feel. Um, it was to me the art of my senses, of where I could really feel something. Also, crocheting, you start with one point. There's no machine, and you make points make lines, and lines make shapes, and shapes make form. Uh, with crochet, there was absolutely no limitation to my direction and what I wanted to create. Uh, you can go three-dimensional with it or two-dimensional. So back into Pratt, um, I found myself translating all of my uh, assignments in fiber. The climate that I moved to from New York well, it was first California, but the move to Wyoming was a place where the wool really did play an important part. And it was there that I was making, you know, 60-pound crocheted clothing and realizing that it was time for me to move on with this form and that I was in Wyoming where it was cold. Um, but the space and the vision that I had there was so strong that I wanted to really kind of clean, clean my imagery up. And that's where I began applying fabric on the surface by applying uh, fabric from, the re from behind and cutting out, um, creating my own structure of fabric. A collage, I guess, would be a very good word for what I do with fabric. And collage work and whether I do paper or fabric, my ideas all uh, come together very well with the, both these mediums. When I begin a piece, whether it is collage work or uh, my paper work or clothing, I begin with uh, uh, several series of drawings. And I keep my sketchbooks as uh, a wonderful record and uh, a personal diary, in a sense, of, of my thoughts and my feelings. When I teach, I like to explain that to my students, the significance of keeping a diary, in a sense, that it doesn't have to be the written thing, but just the sensations and uh, uh, compiling even moods or experiences that uh, can be utilized in the work. 
So my, ch my drawings change around quite a bit uh, when first conceived. And I suppose it's pressure of having to finish something or a deadline that I really put down what I consider a finalized drawing. And it is never really final until I project it and change it into my material or use my material as uh, the drawing. I like to work one-to-one. -one. It's very important especially in clothing. Uh, when working one-to-one, -one, I can draw immediately onto my muslin pattern. I can take paper and cut it up and make shapes and just, um, it's a wonderful interaction to have it right there into scale. Things do change as you enlarge them and having a sense of the patterning and where the armhole is and where the, where the, the, the elbow will be bent is important. From the drawing on the pattern, I then use um, paper to make paper patterns and my actual shapes and areas that I will uh, dye, or cut up and apply, app applique fabric. It's kind of like a puzzle or a stained glass effect of actually breaking down the image and cutting around those shapes, dyeing them, and then putting them all back together as a puzzle. Somewhere along the line of when the drawing begins and when I have the feel of the fabric is when I begin uh, my color samples with the dyeing. I might have an idea of the color at first and the, and the feeling, but it really takes a little while of working with the fabric. And I do make decisions as I go along, so the idea of a finalized drawing is uh, it is always work in, prog in process and in progress. And again, it's, uh, it's a form which it, it challenges me, the constant questioning. I guess I'm a problem solver, <laughs> but I create problems and uh, find situations to, uh, to, make, to make them work. Uh, surface decoration is, uh, is a love, I guess that's from the graphic arts interest that I had in, in high school and in, in the beginning of college. What happens when making clothing, it, is, it goes beyond that surface decoration because you are dealing with a three-dimensional form. And it plays back and forth all the time of what, what looks good flat and then what happens when that flat piece goes three-dimensional. So it is a constant play of the flat and the three-dimensional that I use in my work. There is an important interplay between Jean's work in wearables and her more abstract collages, which incorporate handmade paper, screening, wooden sticks, and found objects. These constructions allow her to play with ideas without the functional limitation of garment structure. To work more spontaneously and intuitively and in a different scale. They also open up directions for her to follow in textile work. Paper is a non-structured uh, material. You, from pulp, from a wonderful slurry of water and pulp, uh, you can pull this beautiful sheet of, of substance. The dyeing of the paper is also uh, works in correlation with the dyeing of my fabric, and I can work off both. Clothing takes a great deal of time, and with my love for my paper collage work, I can, I can spend the time having my ideas made possible faster. With the paper, I treat it very similar as I do my fabric. Um, I cut it up, I dye it, I draw, I stitch on it. Uh, it becomes uh, a, a similar evolution as the fabric. However, I'm not making the fabric, I am making the paper, and I like, I like what that process is about. Designing of my work is done flat in pieces. Shapes are cut out and then put back together so that I can create something very large but 
because it is pieced together, uh, the dyeing is made possible. I work with a certain vat size, um, so I, I, I can't get too much fabric into my dye pot. Um, but that is a problem that I've solved. Uh, it's my approach to the imagery is very suitable to the, the type of process that I choose. And I, I certainly did not choose the process before I made the design so that I, I make accommodations for, for the material. The burner that I use, I can bring here to my studio. It is portable. I can set it outside if I'm dealing with large pieces of fabric. And I like that portability of it. Also, of course, with the fumes, I like to keep that outside as much as possible as well. This burner that I use now um, is a cooker that was invented in the South for cooking very, very large pots of uh, gumbo and outdoor cooking. And it's been a very important tool for me right now, considering the dyeing takes so much time. It cuts it cuts my time down considerably. The variegation of color is wonderful in the dyeing. Because the dye takes in 45 seconds, I can very quickly dip dye my fabric into wonderful gradations and use top dyeing as well. I use primarily wool. Wool has an integrity, a structure to it, a feel to it, that I love more than any other fabric. And my dyes are so suitable to the wool that I, even though I live in California, I create woolen pieces. I'm in search of white fabric and fabric that can be felted. Certain fabric does not felt. Uh, I say felting as a term that means uh, shocking the fabric into hot water and then cold and having it, the shrinkage be part of the integrity of the fabric. As I work more with this material and this process of felting and dyeing, my limitations become less. I can create more directly the image. I don't have to worry about raveling of edges. and uh, The fabric works very well. The way I construct my clothing <clears throat> is I use flat shapes. I cut them out from, from the drawing. Uh, I place them into dye. And where there are curves, I might choose to use knitted bands. Uh, <clears throat> knitting, when cut against the grain, has a wonderful uh, bias effect so that I can really sculpt and uh, create amorphous forms. I like a balance of geometry and very amorphous natural forms in my work. And the materials that I choose um, for that partic particular image uh, is of importance. Things change once it comes out of the dye, and the piece really becomes alive. I think this is, at this point, is where all those tedious hours of sitting at a machine uh, can be the most frustrating. Because you see that this thing has come, has come to life in terms of its size, its color, its form. Uh, but then it has to be put together. And I've found and invented certain techniques <clears throat> of constructing the fabric um, that is suitable and tolerable in a sense. And that is a very simple double stitching. Uh, <clears throat> it's reverse applique where I can place the fabric behind and then cut out the front. Because the fabric has been felted, it doesn't unravel. The tools of my trade are very few and are very precious and important to me, as in all trades. I've chosen a household machine that has the capability of a great deal of 
use and I think is as comparable as some of the industrial machines. To sit hours at a machine, you really have to not only have the tolerance for that kind of sitting still, but your tool and the aesthetics of that tool are very important. And I like to think that I'm driving a very fine-tuned machine, and indeed I am with my work. Certain techniques that I use have been evolved from the actual integrity of the fabric and what I know the fabric can do. So it is, it's, it's a, a union and an exchange back and forth of what I want the fabric to do and then what it will do. And some ideas come from, from wonderful mistakes that I will do. Uh, experimenting with certain stitches and uh, combining of fabrics. Finishing of my work is important to me that whether the edge is straight or curved, whether a piece is symmetrical or asymmetrical, how that edge is dealt with is important. And I like things that f have a frame, in a sense, to them. And that's why I've chosen to use both um, commercially knitted fabric, so it, ha it looks hand done. For certain edges, I would prefer, and I often use, the machine knitting. It's time consuming. Um, but again, it works, it has, it allows an integrity to the piece that is important, and that is to having that finished edge. I have a uh, simple knitting machine that will do uh, bands of, of all types, and I like to keep a little stockpile of these bands on hand so that I can um, use them for different pieces. A lot of the times I'll just knit black and white or just plain white and then dye it for the piece to be used. The wool jersey works great uh, as the knitting edge. It's not as thick and it's a little more refined, but it's, it's also suitable. This new vest that I created uh, does not have a finished band around the whole edge. There's a zigzagging around part of it. And I think this is interesting and perhaps a new direction of combining uh, uses of the edge in different ways. When I create clothing, it's very important that they are functional, that the duality of the functional object and my fantasy is a, is a partnership. <laughs> I'd like my clothing to be timeless. They, I don't want them to be dated. And that is the trouble I get into in this society is because I make clothing it is often viewed as something of fashion. The jersey series of dresses I've been doing are lightweight. There is definitely a, um, a problem of structure involved in the techniques that I want to use. And they certainly have been a challenge of learning to apply fabric that moves around on each other. The dresses have become a very suitable way for me to put something into production. It doesn't take away from my clothing. Uh, I can still use the materials that I like. And I see them as uh, more accessible to the public. I see the progression of my work now that I have been in California for some time. Uh, the progression being of lighter fabrics. My interest is in a quality work. Whether I bind it in a certain color or a certain fabric uh, really is a decision that's made as I go along and as I finish a piece. Uh, it's important that, that, that my objects have a feeling of great value of time and te technical ability to them. So I 
often learn as I go along what, it, what is best for the garment and, and also I learn how to. When I work with the clothing, it's very important that movement is involved in good fit. I studied flat pattern making uh, for a year and I find, found that that was very important and uh, I didn't want an obstruction in creating the clothing. So this knowledge was very important to me. I choose to do what I do because of the love of the, of the material, not because I like to sew. And I think perhaps like that kind of background of, of, of learning the technique first and then saying, well, what am I supposed to do? I feel that my work is successful because it starts from a place of something that I want to do and then I'll figure out how to do it. And that is the challenge of my spirit, I suppose, that, that keeps me going. I'd like people to see my coats as objects that are timeless. I have a wonderful vision of a photograph that I'd like to do of a field of several men and women wearing fur coats. And in the center of that photograph is one of my coats. And that is that uh, there's a timelessness about fur coats. My early works were extremely organic. They were organic in content and they were organic in form. My desire to create a clear image brought on the techniques of flat fabric and the combination of using the a geometry with amorphous shapes. I looked at the fa favas uh, as some of my deepest ins inspiration of color and the liveliness of an expression, a form. And I see that nature has always been an inspiration to, to these images. The transition I made from the crochet <clears throat> to the flat fabric was in a way a means of refining that natural forms, of making them a little more abstract. And the content of my work is changing that way, that I, I find that I can communicate and have a language with the work uh, using abstraction of these forms, that I don't need to be as literal. Checkerboards, for example, was a piece of great transition in my life. It's where the dying really was utilized more so than ever before. The grid was a way of formalizing, of using a form uh, that I never used before. And I want my work to have a emotional response to it. Uh, I want to create things that no one has ever seen before. I want to be able to give people my experience. It's a kind of a sharing experience where um, I'm driven to to make this image, uh, but then what? I want that image to have a spirit. I want my objects to live, um, to live, to be, to be felt, to be touched. And it is that love for the material that is uh, it's what, what I do what I do.